Okay, your bread has done its final rise and you can see that it's it's gotten considerably larger. Now before you put it in the oven you're going to want to make a slash in the surface to allow the crust to open. So when the dough springs when it hits the hot surface in the Dutch oven it'll have room to expand. So what I'm going to use is just one of these little utility razor blades. You can use a sharp knife if you have a real sharp knife. Um, you can pick these up in packs of five at a hardware store for very little. So I'm going to very gently slash the surface of the loaf. And I think I'll turn it around and score it again go in this direction. Now you're going to want to place this in your oven. Alright, your oven is preheated to 500 degrees. So the next step is get the dough into your preheated Dutch oven. Very quickly slip the Dutch oven out. Close the oven. Use the parchment paper to transfer your dough very gently into your hot Dutch oven. Replace the lid. You leave the paper hanging out and gently slide it back into the oven. All right. At this point, you want to reset the heat to 450 and set your timer for 20 minutes. And wait. All right, now it's been 20 minutes, and the crust is steamed inside of the Dutch oven. So what you're going to want to do is take the lid off so that the crust can brown in the dough. Now you set your time for 20 more minutes. All right, after another 20 minutes, your bread should be done. So, we'll take it out of the oven. You're gonna have to grab this paper kind of low because the charred paper will break off. and set it on a cooling rack. All right, at this point, probably the first thing you're going to want to do is cut into this bread, but try to avoid doing that. You've waited this long, so you might as well might as well let it finish. While it's still hot, the matrix, the gluten that holds the bread in shape is still very delicate. So if you actually cut into it at this point, all you're going to do is just mash it down and you're going to have a, a ball of, of dough. So try to let it set for a couple hours in order to let that, that matrix cool and then enjoy it. Alright, your two hours are up, the bread is cool, and finally your patience is going to be rewarded. Alright, so we've got a nice brown crust, both sides, and it smells wonderful. So let's see here, I think I'm just going to cut it right down the center. Ah, there we go. The 
crumb is open, it's full of air holes, just the kind of place where homemade butter can pool. Mm. It's got a slightly tart flavor to it without actually being a sourdough. Very, very moist crumb. And the crust, the crust will make some fantastic toast. I was a little disappointed in the height of the bread. Sometimes it'll it'll raise well above this, but fermentation is a organic process and it's affected by, as I said, time and temperature, but also by weather. When I started baking this loaf of bread, we had two really warm days. It was 80 degrees both times, so the fermentation went great. And then I put it up for the last uh, rise last night and we had a cold front come in and the barometric pressure dropped and it kind of took the lift out of the loaf of bread but it's still it's still great you'd really enjoy this but remember that you can experiment with this recipe um, you can change the Hydration, for example. Now, this loaf was done at 75% hydration. You could experiment uh, if things are moist in your in your neighborhood. Um, you can try 70%. You can try 65. Experiment. Find out. Find out what works for you. Also, altitude will change how your bread responds. And this is just a very very basic recipe. This is a starting spot for you. You can add all sorts of things. You can increase the um, whole wheat composition up to, I would say, successfully maybe 70%. You could change out the whole wheat with rye if you wanted to make uh, rye experiment with that. Also, you can add a lot of things to your bread. Uh, some of the additives that I normally use are things like uh, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. Um, a lot of people really love the combination of uh, green onions or shallots or fresh chives in the summertime, chopped up, added to the dry mix. And then um, caraway seeds. That's a great combination. I think my all-time favorite um, ingredients for this bread is chopped up olives and fresh rosemary in the summertime. It's wonderful. Feel free to experiment. And I'd be happy to hear from you, you know, what experiments are successful, which ones aren't. If you have any questions, get in touch with me. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel, Kimmy's Kitchen, and share these videos with your friends. Until next time, I'm Doug Cuny, take care.